This video will highlight how NetApp FlexCone technologies can radically change the speed and agility of traditional software and hardware development environments. In this example, we will use an AWS EC2 compute environment connected to NetApp Private Storage NPS to host a Perforce P4D and Perforce broker service and provide the compute for an Android development environment. We will first launch the EC2 instance from the AWS web console, then mount the NPS from a PuTTY terminal window, then start and verify the Perforce P4D and P4 broker services are running. I'll now show how NetApp's open source P4 Flex broker scripts add NetApp Snapshot and Flex clone technologies to the Perforce command line environment. Once the P4 and P4 broker services are running, we will log in as user Bob and list the available volumes using the P4 flex volumes command. Now that our environment is up and running, I will demonstrate two development approaches. The first is the slow traditional way of working where each developer checks out and builds their own workspaces. Then I will demonstrate how the fast developer works using NetApp's Flex clone technologies. Let's take a look at the structure of the Android development environment. The Jenkins CI build, nightly builds, and release build directories are where the build release team runs the regular automated builds. Users work in a user directory where they create their personal workspaces in their respective named directories. This demo highlights three team members. The slow developer, Bob the Jenkins CI owner, also known as Bob the Builder, and the fast developer. Now let's take a look at how the slow developer works. Like most developers, he creates a new workspace directory Then he runs P4 client to initialize the new workspace. He then edits the path to the Android source code repository. Then the developer runs P4 sync to check out the Android source files. Now this is going to take a while, so the slow developer heads towards the coffee machine while he waits for the files to copy from the source repository to his workspace. Now let's take a look at the NetApp methodology for accelerating development. Bob, the builder, is responsible for managing the Jenkins continuous integration build environment. Each time new files are checked in by developers, the Jenkins build process runs P4 sync to get the latest files, then it runs the build and test scripts. Once the build is done, using the p4 flex snapshot command, the Jenkins process creates a named snapshot for the new integration build. The fast developer uses known good, built, and tested snapshots from Bob's Jenkins builds to create his own workspaces. He lists the available snapshots then creates a flex clone workspace using the p4 flex clone command. He then configures his new workspace using the p4 client and p4 flush commands. He then continues to develop as usual in just a fraction of the time he used to. Bob is working on the Jenkins continuous integration CI build. As you can see he has already checked out all the Android source files. Running the p4changes-m1 command, we can see that the workspace includes all the code changes up to change number 29. He then runs the p4 flex snapshots command to list the snapshots on this volume. There is not yet a snapshot for integration of change number 29. Using the p4 flex snapshot command, Bob creates a new snapshot for the build which includes changes up through number 29. The snapshot took only a few seconds to create. Now let's list the snapshots again. The fast developer changes directory to the Android's users fast developer directory where 
he will create his new workspace. As you can see, there is not yet any workspaces available. He runs the p4 flex snapshots command to find out which snapshots are available to clone. He sees the snapshot for change 29 is available. He then runs the p4 flex clone command to create a clone based on snapshot Android Jenkins build number 29. In just 20 seconds, the flex clone appears in the user's project directory. As you can see, the directory contains an exact clone of the Jenkins build volume, including the fact that the files and directories are still owned by user Bob. NetApp provides a highly optimized script for quickly changing the ownership. The command takes just a few minutes to change ownership of over 805,000 files to user Fast Developer. The next step is to register the new workspace with Perforce. Start by editing the .p4 config file to change the owner and p4 client names. Then run the p4 client to complete the configuration. Once this is done, the user should run p4 flush with the correct change number. This tells Perforce to update the workspace without downloading any files. Again, this just takes a few minutes. Once this completes, the workspace is ready to develop just as if the user had run p4 sync in the traditional manner. But now the workspace is available in just a fraction of the time and just a fraction of the actual storage footprint. Now let's take a look at the new Flex cloned workspace. As you can see, it looks just like the Jenkins build directory. It not only contains all the Android changes up to change number 29, but it also includes all the build artifacts. The out directory contains the compiled Android system image file. The workspace is compiled and ready for testing and or incremental development, as if the user had checked out and built the workspace themselves. Now let's edit a Perforce controlled file, make a change, and check it back into Perforce just to prove that the Perforce workspace is configured properly for continued incremental development. We can use the p4 flex clones command to see a list of the flex clones and how much space the clones consume. As you can see, the parent volume takes up 67 gigabytes, but the flex clone only consumes 18 megabytes. The split estimate number is the amount of storage shared between the parent and the clone. Subtracting the split estimate from the flex clone volume, you get the actual space consumed by the flex clone. In this case, it's about 18 megabytes. And the slow developer is still waiting for P4 sync to complete. About one hour later, the checkout is done. But wait, the developer still needs to build or compile his workspace before he can begin testing or doing incremental development. Even accelerating this video, the process feels like it takes a long time. Time for the slow developer to get his next cup of coffee. Okay, the checkout and build process is done after 108 minutes. And if we look, the new workspace consumes 67 gigs of storage, none of it shared. It's also important to remember that the slow developers, P4 Sync put a load on the P4 server and has compiled consumed compute resources. The fast developer, on the other hand, put almost no load on the Perf4 server and consumed no compute resources creating his workspace. Now let's see how we can use the flex clone methodology to create an automated bisect flow to accelerate bug detection and identification. In the following example, we will create 20 flex clone workspaces in just 63 seconds. For those unfamiliar with bisect, it's a process for identifying which change introduced a bug. In the following example, the prior nightly regression detected no bugs in changes up to number 22. When the next nightly regression ran, 
with changes up to 39, a bug was detected. Netly regressions typically run a more exhaustive set of tests than the Jenkins continuous integration builds. So test escapes happen. In this example, one of the changes between change 22 and change 39 introduced a bug. Which one was it? We bisect the changes, check out build and test all the changes up to number 30. If that build passes, then we know the bug was introduced between changes 31 and 39. We bisect again, checking out change 35, then build and test. We continue bisecting the changes until we identify change 36 as the first change to demonstrate the bug. We now know who made the change and which files were involved. Now we can make decisions about how we fix the issue. Now if we use flex clones based on the snapshots created during the Jenkins continuous integration builds, then we can shorten the bisect process by simply cloning and then immediately launching tests. The process is the same as the traditional method, except we no longer have to check out and build before running tests. The time to detect and correct a new bug is dramatically shortened. Now that we see how fast and effective flex clones can be, let's take bisect to the next level. Why don't we clone all changes at once and then launch all the tests in parallel. So instead of a serial test process, we create a parallel process. Since we no longer need to compile, we have plenty of compute resources to accelerate the automated debug process. The first change number to fail is the change which introduced the bug. Now that's fast. In this demo, I've created a simple script which will generate 20 flex clones in parallel. Let's time how long it'll take to create the 20 flex clones. sixty three seconds now we can kick off the bisect tests run the p4 flex clones command to list the clones you can see that in sixty three seconds we created the equivalent of one point three terabytes of workspace but only consumed less than a half a gigabyte now where are the flex clones located they are auto magically mounted in bob's user directory no need to run chone or p4 flush since these are test only directories. One last flex clone use model. Many build teams I talk to say that they incrementally compile their CI builds, but they always build their nightly and release builds from a clean checkout. They do this primarily because they don't trust their build or make file processes. Flex clones can still help. Instead of taking the time to check out the nightly and release builds, you can create a clone of a pre-checked out volume. Create a code only volume and use Jenkins process to keep the workspace up to date with the latest passing CI build. Then, when it's time to create a nightly build, simply clone the code from the snapshot corresponding to the last good change number. This will save the time and disk space associated with checking out the files. Did you know that you can snapshot a clone and even clone a clone? This means that you can create a snapshot of your nightly and release build volumes and then allow users to clone the nightly or release builds for testing. Now that's cool. NetApp snapshot and flex clone technologies integrated into the Perforce P4 flex broker can reduce checkout and build times, improve developer productivity and agility, enhance product quality by getting builds to dev and test faster, and it will reduce the strain on your compute, network, and storage infrastructure. You can find out more about the P4 Flex Broker and other NetApp solutions for DevOps at the following links. Thank you very much.